If you clicked on this video, that means that you want to learn more about customizing canvas shoes. The major benefit of working on canvas shoes is A, they cost about half the price of an Air Force One, or B, unlike the Air Force Ones or any other leather shoe, you won't need to do any surface preparation for these. So if you clicked on this video, that means you're on a quest to find reliable information about customizing canvas shoes. And there is so much bad, bad, bad. There is so much bad advice on YouTube on this topic. Just from a quick YouTube search and watching a couple of really popular videos, here is some of the bad advice I've heard. You can use any paint so long as you clear coat it. You can use Angelus Too Thin instead of Angelus Too Soft. Just use Posca pens. I can't even do this. Or it's just videos of people claiming to do tutorials, but they leave out all of the important information that you need to know. So in this video, I'm going to set the record straight. For the purposes of demonstration, for this video, I'm going to be customizing a pair of Converse All Stars, which is a definite classic when it comes to canvas sneakers. On this pair, I'm going to be doing some art from the popular 1998 anime Cowboy Bebop, which was actually the first anime I ever watched. So I'm really excited to get started on this pair. Let's get started. Now the first question you might ask is what paint do I use to paint canvas shoes? The best answer I can give is Angelus acrylic leather paint. It's the standard go-to for any customizer on any surface. And fortunately this type of paint allows you to paint on canvas shoes if you add an Angelus additive called Angelus Too Soft. Now unfortunately this little bottle is quite expensive and for the same price as this little bottle I managed to get a big bottle of GAC 900. This is exactly the same thing at a fraction of the price. You'll definitely need some masking tape to cordon off certain areas that you might not want paint to get on. I like to use a paper masking tape and also a vinyl masking tape for going around edges. When working with Too Soft or GAC 900, it's really important that you mix your ratio as well. So I got these little mixing pots that are great for storing paint so they don't dry out in between passes and I pre-mix the colors that I'll need. And a big factor whenever using Angelus Too Soft or GAC 900, it's very important to heat set your work. The paint is heat activated so you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun. I much prefer my little hair dryer because a heat gun can actually damage the surface of your shoe if you're not careful. So I like to create a little cardboard skeleton that I like to prop up with some socks on the inside so the shoe retains its shape. When it comes to adding your base coat of your primary color mixed with your additive, you'll notice that the paint wants to absorb directly into the canvas. Without the paint additive, the paint wouldn't absorb into the fibers of the shoe and it would leave a very screen printy kind of impression. When working on customs, my primary focus is efficiency. And one of the ways that I save a lot of time is by tracing my chosen image out on my tablet and using it to create a vector mask. This I do with masking tape and simply apply it to the surface of the shoe. Now, if you decide to airbrush on your pair of canvas shoes, you may find yourself facing the too thin, too soft problem. While too soft allows your paint to absorb directly into the surface of the canvas and requires heat setting to enable flexibility, Angela's too thin simply thins your paint so that it can flow through an airbrush effectively. But when you add your too soft or GAC to your paint, you'll notice that your paint is already thin enough to spray through the airbrush. And therefore too thin is not necessary. If you add more too thin, you could cause your paint to come out weak or for it to come out too wet and can cause a whole lot of problems. If however your fabric paint mix is not thin enough to put through the airbrush, experiment cautiously with small amounts of too thin before spraying. Now everything I've spoken about so far in this video has been about process and procedure. Of course you can do an entire custom with nothing but process and procedure, masking off areas, spraying them or hand painting them. But when does a procedure become art? I'd like to challenge you. The next time you plan to do a pair of custom sneakers, I'd like you to think ahead and think of one area where you can expand your artistic capabilities during that pair. 
plan to have an area of your custom where you're not entirely sure if or how you're going to do it. Personally, with this pair, it was my goal to improve in my line work. I've often struggled to get consistent thin lines, but in this pair, I made sure that I had plenty of opportunities to learn and grow and improve in my line work. And truthfully, I wasn't prepared for all of the things that I learned and how much easier it now is for me to do. This is what will set your work apart and give it a personality and character that the generic Louis Vuitton pattern or the drip swoosh could never have. Now this doesn't mean you need to do portraits or very fine thin black lines. I'm just encouraging you to do something unique and something that stands out from the rest. Trust me, this is a key way to make sure that your art doesn't stagnate and that your skills and abilities can grow but also that the uniqueness of your artwork can grow too. When doing stars, I advise leaving out the Too Soft or GAC 900, as the paint tends to soak into the background, making the paint lose its opacity. Using just neat paint and a toothpick, I plotted out the stars and they shone nice and clear. When it comes to lettering, you could very easily create a vectorized design and send it off to be made into a vinyl sticker stencil. But at this time, I didn't have access to one of those and I decided to make one myself. At first, I thought I was going to do the impossible and cut every letter out. But I realized I could just as easily spray off blocks of white with the airbrush and then use black over that in order to carve letters out of those blocks. Of course, cleaner letters could be done but I was very happy using what I had at my disposal. Just to add a cherry on top, I took some thinned white into the airbrush and I gave the stars a small glow and a few light bursts. On the heel tab, I used a toothpick to detail the Japanese script by hand. I find that a toothpick can be really good for consistently thick lines. When it came to cleaning up and finishing off, I got some nice pointed Q-tips and I dipped them in some acetone to clean the eyelids and the rubber sole. At this point, I bet you're wondering, do I need to clear coat artwork on canvas shoes? Well, the answer is yes. Applying some Angelus Clear Coat can drastically improve your art's durability and protect the luster of your paint's colors. For this pair, I wanted a small amount of sheen, hoping it would complement the starry sky and make the blacks pop. I used Angelus Clear Coat Matte, which, contrary to what you might think, is not matte at all. That's it. That's customizing canvas shoes in a nutshell. After watching this video, I hope you are feeling more confident to go into your next project with your eyes open and a full understanding of what you're doing, the materials you'll need, and what to avoid. 
If you have any other tips and tricks, or if you have used alternate methods to those that I've listed here, please let me know in the comments below and I'll pin them to make that information available for any other would be customizers. If you followed the tips in this tutorial and you've done a pair of shoes, I'd love to see them. Please tag me on my Instagram and I'll be sure to check them out. But for now, thanks for watching.